Hey everyone, my name is Rahul, and today we're going to be talking about binary search. Binary search is an algorithm that's really common on interviews, but at the same time at its core, it's a really foundational algorithm that you would learn in a basic data structures and algorithms course. Today, we're going to be highlighting what binary search is by going through a few examples, we're going to show you how to code it in Java, and finally, we're going to talk about how binary search may show up on coding interviews for you because it really does show up a lot of the time. If you end up liking this video, please leave a like down below and consider subscribing for more content that's just like this. I've also left timestamps down below in the comment section if you want to skip to any one of those sections at any time because if you already know what binary search is, maybe you want to look into how to code it or maybe you already know that and just want to know the interview related information. You can go ahead and skip to the part that's most applicable to you or watch the entire thing. Maybe you'll learn something new. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Before we get into talking about binary search, it's important for us to understand the alternative, linear search. And we're going to highlight that with an example. In this example, we have an array of seven elements from indices 0 to 6. We're going to be looking for the value 6 inside of the array. The way linear search works is we start at index 0. We say, is that value our target value? That's a 17. We're looking for a 6. So it's not. And we continue on to the next index. And we say, is that our target value? It's not. So we continue, and we continue this process on and on and on until either we find the target value or we've gotten to the end of the array, and at that point we realize that the number we're looking for is not in the array. But in this case, we did find it. At index 6, we found our target value of 6. In the worst case, linear search has a time complexity of O of n. If you haven't learned big O notation just yet, don't worry about it. It's not essential to be learning about binary search, and it's only really going to come up in the final section of this video when we talk about how it applies to interviews. But in this case, in the worst case, we go through every single element in this array. So there has to be a better way. And fortunately, there is, sometimes, but there are some prerequisites. Binary search is a better way of going about this, but the two main prerequisites that it has are that first off, you need random access to elements in O of one time. A great data structure for this is an array. Second, your input needs to be sorted. And we're gonna go through an example right now to show you why we need a sorted input. So let's take this example. We once again have an array of seven elements. This time it's sorted because we're running binary search on it. And we're going to be looking for the value six. Instead of starting at index 0 like we did in linear search, we start in the middle of our array. So in this case, we start at index 3. We're then going to ask, is the value at index 3 our target value? No, it's not. That value is a 7. We're looking for a 6. Then we say, is the value at index 3 less than our target value? No, it's not. 7 is greater than 6. Finally, we ask ourselves, is the value at index 3 greater than our target value? And yes, it is. 7 is greater than a 6. But there's also another thing that we gain out of this. Because our list is sorted, we know that any index greater than index 3, so index 4, 5, and 6 in this case, has a value greater than the value at index 3. Because it's sorted in ascending order. Therefore, we can not only toss out the 7, we can also toss out the 10, 17, and the 25. And now all of a sudden, we only have three elements left that we need to consider. We've cut the list in more than half. Now what we do is we repeat the algorithm on the remaining list. In this case, we go right to index one, which is in the middle of our remaining array. We ask ourselves, is the value at index one our target value? No, it's not. That value is a four. We're looking for a six. We ask, is it less than our target value? Yes, it is. And remember, by the logic that we gave earlier, anything to the left of index 1, so in this case index 0, is also less than our target value. Therefore, we toss out the 4 and we toss out the 1. And what we're left with is just one number. We're going to now go ahead and repeat the algorithm on the remaining list. But there's a special case that we need to think about. When we only have one value left, we have to check, is that our target value? If it is, we're done. If not, the value we're looking for does not exist within the list. But in this case, the value at index 2 
is our target value of six, so we're done. We found the six. Now let's take another example where in this case, the value does not exist within the array. Once again, we start right in the middle of our array, right at index three. We ask ourselves, is that our target value? No, it's not. And then we ask, is it less than our target value? Yeah, it's less. Seven is less than 30. So we throw away the seven and everything to the left of the seven. We then repeat the algorithm on the remaining list, starting at index five as our new middle. We ask, is that our target value? No, it's not. And then we ask, is it less than our target value? Yes, 17 is less than 30. So we toss out the 17, which is at index five, and everything to the left of index five. And we're left with one value, which once again, we have to check, is that our target value? No, it is not. 25 is not 30. Therefore, the value does not exist within our array. To highlight some of the properties of binary search, its time complexity is O of log N, which is better than the time complexity of linear search, which is O of N, and its space complexity is O of one, if you write it in a way that doesn't take up any additional space outside of the input. But remember, again, this is not essential for you to understand the algorithm or the code that we're just about to write in this next section. So let's get right to coding. Next, we're going to be looking at how we code binary search in Java. We're first going to take a look at the recursive implementation followed by the iterative implementation. And if you're interested in seeing the text-based versions of these, I recommend you go check out my Medium article. It's linked below in the description, and I have full gists from GitHub where you can see the code in text, copy it, paste it into your own editor, play around with it, and do anything that you want to do. So I recommend you also check that out. That is linked below in the description. With regards to the recursive implementation, let's first take a look at the method signature. We're going to be taking in an array of integers that's going to be sorted ahead of time called ARR, and we're going to be taking in a number that we're looking for within the array. And our return value is going to be the index of the number inside of the array, or minus one if the number is not present in the array. Before we even get to anything else, we can go ahead and handle one simple error case. If the array is empty, we can just go ahead and assume that the element does not exist within the array. So we return negative one. And then what we're going to do is define a helper method. The reason why we want to have a helper method is because it eases the process of us passing in additional parameters to our function that we'll use in its recursive implementation. I'll show you why we need that going forward. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to call bin search helper. And if we take a look at bin search helper, it takes in four parameters. The first one is our array. We just go ahead and pass that in. The second is the number we're searching for, which we also can easily pass in. The next one is the low, which is the lowest index we are still considering within our array to find the value num. So at the start, we're considering all the values in the array. So the first value we're considering is index zero, and the high is the highest index we're still considering. So for that, that's the length of your array minus one, or the last index in your array. We're gonna go ahead and pass all of these into our helper function. And the way our helper function is going to work is we first check is the low value the same as the high value, which means we only have one value left to consider. Remember the case I talked about in that example. In that case, we have to check that value and see, is it equal to the number that we are looking for? If so, we return that index. If not, we return minus one. That is what we call our recursive base case. If there isn't just one index left to consider, then what we do is we go ahead and jump to the middle of the portion of the array that we're still considering. So the way we find that is we take the low, we add the high minus the low, and then divide that result by two. The reason why we do this, this is technically equivalent to writing low plus high, and then all of that divided by two. But the reason why we don't do that is in the case that we might have an integer overflow. So if you add in low plus high, and that goes beyond the bounds of the integer data type, then you're going to have an integer overflow and you're not going to get the results that you want. Therefore, by doing it in this manner, we avoid having an integer overflow, but it's effectively the same formula. 
after we found the middle index, then we go into our comparisons. I wrote this a little differently than what we did in the examples, but it's effectively the same thing. We check is the value at that middle index less than num, the number that we're looking for. In that case, all elements to the left of that middle index we know are lesser than the value at that middle index. And if that middle index value is less than the number we're looking for, we can toss out the middle index as well as all numbers to the left of that. The way we do that though is we recall bin search helper, which is our recursive helper function, and change the low value to be mid plus one, signaling that we're only considering indices mid plus one to whatever that high value was. If that's not the case, then we go ahead and check if the value at the middle index is greater than the number we're looking for. If it is, we know that all elements to the right of index mid in the array are greater than the value at index mid. Therefore, we can throw away all those values. And the way we do that is we set the high value to be mid minus one, meaning we're no longer considering mid or any value greater than mid. And finally, if it's neither of those, which means the value at the middle index is equal to the target value we're looking for, then we've found the value and we're going to go ahead and return mid. So we're just going to continually perform these operations and that will help us come to our solution. And that is how you code binary search recursively in Java. Next, let's go on to binary search iteratively. It's not too different. The idea is still the same. So if we go into the iterative implementation, we take in a similar input. We're taking an array as well as a number that we're looking for. We do the same error check. If the length of the array, if there's no elements in it, then we return negative one off the bat because you can't find your target value in an empty array. We go ahead and define low and high values, again, starting at zero and the array length minus one. But this time, instead of recalling the function, within our while loop here, we're going to just adjust the values within it. So let's go into depth on that. We start off by our while loop condition, which is while low is not equal to the high value, which is the same thing that we had as our base case, if you remember, in a recursive implementation. So here what we're going to do is we're gonna say mid is going to be defined in the exact same way we did it in the recursive implementation, and we do the exact same comparisons. We check if the middle value is less than the number, if it's greater than the number, or if it's equal to. And if it's less than, we just reassign the low value to be mid plus one. If it's greater than, we assign the high value to be mid minus one. And if they're equal, we found it, we return mid. And we continue this until low is finally equal to high. Once that's the case, we go back to our base case. We just return whether the value at that one last index is equal to the target value, num. If it is, we return that index. If not, we return negative one. So again, this is how you code binary search recursively and iteratively. And if you want to see these in text format, check out my Medium article, which is linked below in the description. And now let's get into the section on how binary search may come up on coding interviews. And there's a few key things that I want you to remember, but before we get to those, I just wanna put it out there that binary search a lot of the times will be an optimization to a question you may have already solved using a linear search. So don't worry if you don't get it on the first go, unless you're specifically being asked to just code binary search. A lot of the times you may have coded out a brute force solution that may have resulted in you using a linear search through a question where you can now optimize it with binary search. So now let's get into the three main tips that I have here for interviews and relating to binary search. The first thing that you wanna look out for with binary search on interviews is to see if there's any cases in which you're doing a lookup of a value inside of a list. And you wanna be careful about these cases because that's exactly where you can use binary search. So that's the kinds of instances where you wanna think about, is there any way where I could use binary search to optimize this? The second thing you wanna look for is your algorithm's time complexity. Now, if your input is not sorted, which means that you would have to sort it in order to use binary search, think about how that sorting algorithm is going to impact your algorithm's efficiency, specifically with regards to its time complexity. So the best sorting algorithms that you could use 
often have a worst case time complexity of O of n log n. Meaning, if your algorithm that you currently have for your solution is O of n squared or worse, then you can consider using a sorting algorithm followed by binary search. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. You're not improving your time complexity by switching over to using binary search. So look out specifically for that case. If you have a time complexity worse than O of n squared and your input is not sorted, then only then can you consider using a sorting algorithm followed by binary search. The final thing that you wanna be careful about is whether your input list is sorted or not. A lot of the times your interviewer will give you constraints like your input list is going to be sorted. There's usually a reason why they're telling you this information. They don't just give you this extraneous information and then expect you to do nothing with it. If a list is sorted, think about the different algorithms you can use on a sorted list. Binary search should be one of the top ones that you think about when you get an input that is sorted because that means that you're enabled to use binary search in O of log n time without having to do any sorting yourself. That is the best case scenario for you. So you wanna be really careful. Think about whether you can use it in that scenario and if you can, go for it because that's where you should be using binary search. Those are the three key things that I want you to think about when you're going for these interviews and remember that binary search is not always the right answer. In some cases it will be, but in others, just sorting the list itself is going to increase your time complexity to a point where you're not even gaining anything out of binary search. So be careful about those moments and really think through what is the most optimal way to do this. Well, that was binary search. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'm putting out more content relating to how you prepare for coding interviews, how you enhance your computer science fundamentals, and how you can build up your knowledge of data structures and algorithms. So if you want more of that, please subscribe for more. Thanks and see ya.